So one of the things that we're going to be showing today is the ability of the BE API framework to reload on the fly the um, schema or the uh, IO state. Um, so one of the problems that a lot of people have in their uh, APIs, uh, for even in uh, frameworks like uh, Apogee and MuleSoft, is the ability to reload your IO state, like files like uh, OpenAPI or RAML or API Blueprint. And that's because um, that data in OpenAPI and RAML and API Blueprint is actually um, at your single point of truth, which is in your controllers. Um, all of that data in OpenAPI and RAML and API Blueprint are actually stored at your controllers, um, in your, uh, at your methods, using things like annotations or with um, actually hard-coded bindings. Um, and that's because the API uh, pattern was actually built in the 1970s for a um, single-tier architecture. It was never ever built for in-tier in architectures. Um, I actually rewrote the API pattern uh, back in 2012-2013 for in-tier architectures, and I found, found out it wasn't written for in-tier architectures when I was on a DevOps contract for Cisco and Apple. And I've helped a lot of companies with that, and I rewrote it, and I built this into the BAPI framework, um, or BAPI framework, um, so that you could synchronize it on the fly without ever taking anything down. It's one of the major benefits of it, is that you can synchronize it um, with all the other instances and never ever take anything down. It's 100% uptime. And I'm going to demo that today and show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So one of the first things that we're going to do here um, is we're going to go on into the um, auto-generated API docs that we have here and uh, go into an endpoint and just take a look at this real quick. So we're logged in as an administrator. And as you can see, this is um, our auto-generated endpoint endpoint for a person show. And we can see uh, the request variables and the response variables. And I'm just going to show you the schema for that real quick. Um, so person show, I have pulled up right over here. And you can see the request variables for the admin is that I have to send an ID and everybody gets back the same uh, response of ID, version, username, email, enabled, and account expired. And that's all right here as well. So we'll go ahead and test that real quick, make sure that it's getting back the right data. And there it is, all right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this schema so that um, the all the users, everybody except for the admin, is just going to get username and email and then the admin is going to get enabled and account expired. And I already built this out, so it's right over here. As you can see, here's the difference. If you take a look in the response, that's it right there. So permit all gets username and email and role admin gets the additional enabled and account expired. Um, I probably should explain, explain here. Um, the data is actually concatenated. That's why it's called permit all. Everybody gets username and email. Um, and if you have an additional role, or if you have a role actually um, in here, you get additional data. So if you don't have a role specified specifically here, but you do have permission, you're going to just get the default, which is permit all. But if you have a role specified, you will also get the additional data for your role. So role admin is also going to get this additional data. Um, so let's go ahead and test that out. So we'll go ahead and go in here and we will load this up and reload the schema. Go back over here to 
the auto-generated API docs, and you'll notice there it is right there. This is um, username and email and enabled and account expired, just like we wanted. Username and email were available for everybody, and enabled and account expired were the additional data available for role admin. But even though it's showing that, does it actually work? Well, there's your answer. It does actually work. But let's also make sure that it works for the basic user. So let's log in as a in the test account. And make sure that it's working for the basic user. Now, the basic user doesn't send an ID. They just pass their, their own ID that they're logged in as in their token. And they get back um, username and email. So let's test that. Make sure it's working. And there you go. It's working. So there you have it. We didn't have to take a single server down anywhere in our network. Um, unlike uh, with OpenAPI, RAML API, Blueprint, all those others, uh, you have to take down your servers to be able to synchronize this with your API server. We don't have to take this down. It's, it's pushing it out to all our other instances and it's synchronizing and, and working great. Um, and uh, that code is all open source. If anybody has any questions, uh, they can check it out, get in touch, uh, let me know how they like it, or and uh, as always, let me know how they like the videos. And uh, again, stay in touch, keep watching.